What's up guys, Cody here, and in this video we will show you 10 mistakes that most players make that will ruin their aim. I don't want to keep you guys waiting, so let's get into it. Warming up is so important before you head into your games. If you don't spend enough time in aim training or deathmatch before going into comp games, your aim will not be as sharp as necessary. This is a classic mistake that many people make, and over a long period of time without warming up, you will clearly see your aim get worse and worse. I usually spend at least 30 minutes to an hour in warmups before getting comp games going. This leaves my aim being consistent and to a high standard. You chilly brother, oh my god, drink some hot cocoa and warm up. Warm up, dude, throw on a parka, throw on a vest, maybe even a snaggie. There will be times that your aim is just playing up. You aren't hitting the shots you would normally would, and it gets very frustrating. Some players would decide to completely change their sense, either making it far too high or way too low. In the short term, you may see you get a couple more kills in the games after, but when your muscle memory kicks in, your aim will be far worse than before, resulting in a position where you don't know what you should do with your sense. If you feel like your aim is slowly dropping off, feel free to change your crosshair slightly, maybe just the color or another small adjustment, and this will change you to hyper-focus on your aim due to this slight change. It is much more effective and will have no negative outcomes in changing your crosshair instead of your sensitivity. Dude, you are the perfect amount of sensitive, okay? You're very warming and touching, and you also like to kill. <laughs> yeah, I don't change that, dude. You're totally fine. When watching a professional CS GO, there are many times you see the pros just go for one taps on enemies. Due to their amazing crosshair placement and correct movement style, it is quite easy to go for one taps. But going for just one taps on enemies is really difficult and requires a lot of discipline when playing, as you need to know when to shoot and when to stay silent, where it's much better in a lot of situations to spray down an enemy as there's less chance for a mistake. However, the best way to ensure hitting your shots in your spray is to learn the spray control of the main weapons that you use. There are many workshop maps that I use to constantly check and relearn the spray control of weapons. Guys, practice these maps and go for the kill. Say it, don't spray it. Well, actually in this case, say it and spray it. You peeker, why are you always peeking? One of the biggest mistakes many players make when playing Counter-Strike is taking fights too often and too quickly. One rule of thumb that I generally stick to is to wait at least four or five seconds after you've just fired at an enemy to re-peek. After shooting a couple bullets at an enemy, if you don't kill them and have to fall back behind cover, it is very bad to constantly re-peek, as they are completely aware of your position and will be holding your angle, where after 4 or 5 seconds of holding your position, they will have to either move position or check other corners as teammates could easily kill them in the open. This will take about 4 seconds for them to do. Therefore, you can re-peek when they are in motion or checking other angles to ensure to get the kill. The worst mistake you can make is constantly taking gunfights against someone, especially when they know exactly where you are. Bro, you just shot from behind that bush two seconds ago. I know you haven't moved. You can't teleport. You ain't like that. You ain't Abra the Pokemon, bro. Nah, you can't teleport. Peek at me again. See what happens. When using a gun like an SMG or shotgun, it is okay to go for shots while running around, as it has quite a good movement accuracy. Therefore, it's not difficult to get kills while moving. But with guns like the AK-47, M4, and OP, going for shots while moving at full speed can be the worst thing to do. When running around the map, enemies can easily hear your footsteps. Therefore, you may be forced into taking gunfights when running. With an AK in hand, shooting while moving is near impossible, and the only way of getting that kill is with pure luck. Make sure when having an AK, M4, or OP equipped, you are standing still or at least shifting when firing. Therefore, you don't have such a bad weapon in accuracy and you can get those nice and easy kills. And guys, if this whole running and gunning thing doesn't work out for you, maybe try running with scissors. Whenever I do that, that always leads to some danger. Try it out. <laughs> don't actually try it out. I might get in trouble with pro guides. They might fire me, so um, don't do that. 
By the way, speaking of pro guides, have you checked out ProGuides.com? It is an amazing website that offers coaching for your Counter-Strike classes, okay? If you want to get better at the game, then look no further, y'all. Check out ProGuides, man. They got pro coaches that'll help you up. They hook it up, my friends, for real. Super dope. I've done a couple classes with them, and I have already seen improvement. So, now it is your turn, my friends. Have fun. When entering a bomb site or anywhere around the map, it is very important to make sure of having good crosshair placement. When taking any gunfight, if you pre-aim the angle that the enemy will be in, all you need to do is hit your shot and they will be dead. Many new players and inexperienced players will find themselves running onto a site just looking forward and holding W. This means when facing an enemy, you will usually have to flick onto them while being shot, aim at their head and kill them. Instead, when using correct and proper crosshair placement, all you need to do is check your angles and get those free kills. To explain crosshair placement simplistically, it is the idea of changing your crosshair as close to the wall of the angle that you are checking. When moving onto a site, just slowly move between the angles, making sure that if an enemy is there, your crosshair will already be on the enemy's head, making it very easy. This type of aiming is called active aiming. You are actively keeping your crosshair in all the angles that players could be in. This generally is paired with quite a slow playstyle as rushing it is near impossible to check every angle at the same time. Do some aiming and you will be gaming. You like that rhyme? All right, I'll, I'll work on it. One mistake players seem to make is that they do not stop pushing. Being an aggressive player is great. It'll help your team get those early important kills. But the most important thing is knowing when to let go of W, when to stop pushing and play passive and hold an angle. Many players after getting one or two kills will feel electric, will have the feeling of being unstoppable. This will result in making stupid plays and dumb pushes that you would never do if you hadn't already got a kill. Straight trigger happy, dude, calm down. This idea of playing with overconfidence will almost always result in a death and could cost your team the round. After getting two kills on B-Site Mirage, you have already put your team in a five versus three situation, or maybe four versus three, but still, you will have a player advantage and the control of B-Site. In this situation, it makes the most sense to play an after plant position, holding an angle passively and waiting for the CTs to push into your crosshair but nearly every time, players will push too far and die. That was my dying voice. Therefore, giving the CTs a chance to get back into the round. This is the same for CT as well. You will go for an aggressive push middle or maybe in palace or apartments. After getting the first one or two kills, you will be hot headed and carry on pushing towards T spawn. But a lot of the time you will be caught off guard and this will lead to you dying and therefore giving up important map control. It is much better getting one kill in Palace and staying in Palace holding off for a push. Play this passively as it has given your team such a beneficial map position, making it very hard for the T side to go A. Kills are great, but playing with an ego will ruin your team's chance of winning rounds and also your aim. You will make stupid plays and they will become habits and having a bad habit heavily affects your aim. Fun fact for you, I heard that habits take about like three weeks to break or something like that. So don't make the habit, dude, unless you want to spend three weeks trying to change it up. <laughs> Time is money, y'all. Time is money. And we got kills to make, okay? So let's not make those bad habits. A mistake that many players make is constantly changing their position on CT and T side. When playing a new position, you have to learn new pre-aims and pre-fires, new angles and power positions. Therefore, when constantly changing positions, you are going to be playing different play styles and this will affect your aim. For example, if you normally play on A site and decide to switch position to window, the distance of your gunfights, the angle of your opponents and the speed players push you will be very different. A site is very linear. Most of the angles you take fights at won't have a change in height. Therefore, after playing on A for a couple months, your aim will be steady and controlled. Where when changing position towards middle, you have to be constantly aware of the different positions you will get pushed from, the range of the fights you will take, and many other factors. Therefore, if you want to keep your aim consistent and at a high level, make sure you play roughly the same positions on both CT and T side. 
So yeah, just keep it kind of level, you know? Wait a minute, levels, levels, levels. Oh, sometimes I get a good feeling about my aiming strategies. That could be the new remix. The simple mistake that most people make will be the downfall in many players' games. This tiny mistake will cost you many rounds and also lose a lot of gunfights. Many players will seem to always want a quick switch when reloading. This quick switching method was seen to reduce the reload time of weapons. And yes, it seems as though your weapons reloads faster, but it doesn't, and it can cause you a lot of trouble. Quick switching is when you switch between your weapon and your pistol knife mid-reload, therefore canceling the reload animation after the bullets are in your magazine. Yes, it looks quite cool, but there's no in-game benefit, where there are some negatives. If you quick switch too fast, you may not even reload the bullets. And if it's done too late, you have just wasted time by pulling out your other weapon. It is proven to add no benefit. Therefore, by taking out quick switching from your game, you won't ever have zero bullets in the mag or waste any time at all. Therefore, you won't put yourself in a bad position. These simple habits can be fixed within minutes and will completely change your game. This is the same for inspecting weapons. When inspecting your new AK skin, or any other skin for that fact, yes, it looks rather cool. But when inspecting certain weapons like the AK, it covers your crosshair. And if you get bad timing, a player may run in front of your crosshair, and because you have decided to inspect your weapon, you won't get the kill. This will also ruin your aim, and it will give you bad habits and get you killed a lot. Why are you inspecting that skin, dude? It hasn't changed. It hasn't changed, bro. It looks the same exact way as it did one minute ago. One of the biggest problems and mistakes many players make is when they change their sensitivity, aspect ratio, crosshair placement, or aim style to any pro player. Your aim style and play style has been molded over the years of playing FPS games. You have been meticulously creating this play style for so long, bro, like a beautiful ice sculpture. It will be very difficult to completely change how you play to copy a pro. The pros all play at different aspect ratios, sensitivity, view model, and crosshair. But the one thing they all have in common is that they are pro players for a reason. Most pros will have the same aim style as they always have. They play with what works for them. And you should too. Like Billy Joel's Don't Go Changin'. Don't go changing. Ooh, your crosshair placement. Or any other strategies. Don't go changing any of your specs. Do, 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 do. You should never copy what one individual is doing. Just because it works for them, it doesn't mean it will instantly work for you. It is best to slowly adapt your sensitivity and aim style over time, as it will build your muscle memory, and you will improve as a player at a much higher rate when improving small parts of your game. Think of your aim and gameplay as many different components. For example, aim consists of crosshair placement, correct peaking time, counter strafing, headshot accuracy, and many more factors. You cannot just switch to completely different playstyles and instantly master them. It's best to slowly improve each factor of your gameplay to get to the best that you can be. Slowly but surely, you will rise to greatness. Especially if you follow these 10 tips. If you do want to improve, we are here to help. So check out ProGuides.com to get your own personalized training plan. Hope you enjoyed the video, but make sure to comment down below what you feel are some other mistakes that players make that ruins their aim. Oh, that being said, y'all, I'm out of here. Peace out.